Okay, today we're going to take an image that needs some sharpening, but the issue with this one is that it needs different amounts of sharpening in different parts of the image. So I'm going to show you guys a technique on how to deal with this issue. And the really cool part about this is that each part that we've sharpened is going to be on a separate layer and we can actually come back to that layer at any stage of the edit and we can access that sharpening that we applied and fine tune it so we can give it a little bit more or a little bit less. Okay, it's a great technique, it's pretty quick and easy and I reckon you guys are going to love it. So let's get started with it. Hey guys, I'm Dean, how are you going? Thanks for dropping by to watch this video. Before we start, just a quick welcome to you guys that are new to the channel. Here you're gonna find lots of product reviews and tutorials. We've got Photoshop tips and tricks, everything to do with landscape photography. So if that sounds like you, please feel free to subscribe. And if you hit the little bell next to that subscribe button, then I'll be able to let you know each time a new video comes out. Okay, let's get going with this tutorial and today I want to show you how to add selective sharpening to an image in Photoshop. Righto, so this image here is a perfect example of one that needs selective sharpening because I've identified three different areas here and each one needs a different amount of sharpening. So let me just quickly show you that. Just zoom in here. So look, this foreground's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So I would only like to apply a very small amount of sharpening in here. But this rock pool needs quite a bit. We need a bucket load in there to really bring these rocks out. And then the third area is this mid-ground. So this needs a little bit of sharpening, uh, but not too much. And then the, the water in the sky, I, I don't want to apply any sharpening in there at all because that will really destroy it. So let me run through and just show you how to do this. So you've basically got to create a new layer for each different sharpening um, area that you're going to work on. So let's just start by doing that. So Command-J creates a new copy layer. So we're going to apply a high pass filter to this and we're also going to make this layer a smart object. What that will allow us to do is to re-access the high pass filter to change its value. Now because we're going to use a high pass filter we're best to um, turn this layer to black and white so a quick way of doing that is just command shift U so let's change that to black and white. Let's turn this layer now into a smart object so we come up to layers smart objects convert to smart object. Okay this will take a couple of seconds Okay, so that's converted that. You can see in here in this corner, we've got this little icon that just tells me that that is now a smart object. Now, because you're gonna end up with multiple layers, I suggest you rename this. So we'll call this one the foreground. Okay, so we've now got our, our um, black and white layer and we wanna apply our high pass filter to this. So let's come up to filter, other, high pass. Okay, now you notice everything goes grey, looks pretty weird. What you want to do is you want to zoom into the area that you want to sharpen. So this particular area is going to be this seaweed down the bottom here. Now this value doesn't matter too much because you can change it later on, but I suggest you get it roughly where you want it and it's also a good practice. So yeah, I reckon probably around four to five is going to be fine for that. So with this high pass filter, if you haven't used it before, what it does is it finds edges and then it just applies the sharpening to the edges. So if we look into the rock pool area, see it hasn't defined those edges as much. And then you can see the mid ground, it's defined this quite a bit through here. So as I bring this back, you'll find those edges start to disappear and soften off. And as I increase it, if I bring it up to 30 or 40, like you see these rocks in here now really stand out. So wherever this edge or contrast is, it's going to apply the sharpening to that area. So let's go back to our foreground and we want around about four or five. That's going to be fine. So hit OK. 
Now we need to change the blend mode of this layer to overlay or soft light. Okay, I prefer soft light. I find it's just a little bit more subtle. And you'll see now we've lost that grey looking layer and it's gone back to how it should look. So that is now applied sharpening to the whole complete layer. If I turn that on and off, hopefully you can see changes there. It's only fairly subtle, but we only wanted it subtle in that area. Now, this is fine and dandy, but the problem is we only wanted it to be in this one little area down here. So we now need to apply a mask to this layer and paint back in the area that we want to allow the sharpening to flow through. So come down here in your layers palette, this little icon here, click on it, and it'll bring up a mask in here. Now the mask will default to white, so that is basically clear, allowing everything to see through, and it's not actually really a mask. It's not masking anything off at this stage. So let's go Command-I to invert that, and that'll now change that to black. And now we can't see through this layer because we have completely masked it off with this black um, paint here in the mask. So what we want to do is paint in to here with a white brush. So just select B for brush. Now if you go to your tools, if you haven't used the brush tool before, I, I suggest you click on it and make sure it's on brush tool and not pencil tool because pencil tool doesn't have any softening. Now just select the brush size. You can use your brackets on the keyboard to make it bigger or smaller or you can come up here and just select a size here. You want a soft edge brush. Okay, just let me move that out of the way. And now if we come up to the brush toolbar along the top here, we can change the opacity of this brush with the opacity and the flow. Okay, so if you want to feather some sharpening in, you would soften it off. If you want to apply the full amount, then just keep it fairly strong. Look, I'm going to keep it fairly strong just to make this a bit quicker and easier so you can see what's happening. So then all I do is I just paint in here with a white brush. Okay, and you can see if we go back to that mask, you can see the white area now that's painted in. That will now let us see through this layer and we can see through to the sharpening underneath. Okay, if I now turn that layer on and off, we can see our sharpening and it's only in the area that we want it. If I come up into the rock pool area and turn this layer on and off, you won't see any difference at all because it's completely masked off. Okay, so that's basically how we work on a small selective area. Now, the beauty of doing it this way in creating this smart object is that now the high pass filter, I can still access that. So if I come down here in our layers palette on that layer, and if I double click on high pass, it brings that filter back up and I can change its value. So if I found I'd, I'd set it and it wasn't enough and I wanted more, then I can come back in and just crank it up a bit. So let's just crank it up so you can see what happens. So we can then go in and turn that up or down however we want, okay, and change that setting. Now let's do one more area. I just want to show you how to speed this, this up a little bit. So what I've done is I've created an action for creating this whole layer. And I suggest if you want to use this technique, then create that action. It's two, twofold, it'll make things a lot quicker and you don't have to remember every single step. Okay, because it's a little bit to remember all of this stuff, but if it's recorded in an action, then it's there to use and save you lots of time. So let's go back to our background layer, Control J, um, which duplicates a layer. Let's just change this to Rock Pool. Now, if you do make an action up, you can include this as part of the action, like um, actually duplicating the layer. That can be part of your action as well, if you want. Okay, so we've got our layer. I come down here to my actions, and this is this one here, selective sharpening layer. I just select that, hit play. Okay, and it'll take a, a couple of seconds because it's got to create that smart object. 
Okay, so that's done everything that I've done here. I just need to go in and edit this now. So it's created the high pass filter. It's um, converted it to a smart object and it's put in the mask. So first thing I want to do is let's just crank up the value of that high pass filter because this rock pool needed to be fairly strong. So the good thing is that once this is set, you can actually change this and it's pretty much live. Okay, so I reckon there is about good, around 1920. So we go okay. Now we still haven't masked this off. The mask is there, but it's white, so we can completely see through. And as you can see, that amount of sharpening has totally destroyed the rest of the image. So now we need to just invert this mask so make sure your mask is highlighted. So you just click on it by highlighting it. So click on there, Command I, which inverts it, and then B for the brush tool, and then we just paint that sharpening in. And there you go. Now when we turn that layer on and off, we only have that sharpening in that one area. So as you can see, by creating that action, that really speeds up this process. Now, if you don't know how to record an action, of, um, I've got a YouTube video on that, so jump on that and have a look at that one. So with, with this particular image, I would make one more layer and I would do the same process for this mid-ground here. So there you go, folks. This technique allows you to add sharpening selectively to different areas. And remember, because it is a smart object, you can go back into that high pass filter and make adjustments at any time. Also remember with any sharpening, keep it subtle and don't overdo it. Now, let me know in a comment below if you think you can use this in your workflow, I'd really love to know. And also leave us a comment if you have another way of sharpening that you would like to share with everyone. Many thanks guys for watching, have a great day and ciao.